Hello, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. Ni hao. <laughs> so it's going to be a very challenging roundtable for me. I have done that lots of times <laughs> before, but this very first time to have a roundtable in Chinese and English together, so I will try my best. Well, um, so we're going to look at first, I think, your industry professionals. So what does the China 2025 program imply? for the company. So this is a question that I'm going to ask everybody. So probably we're going to start with uh, Professor Yang. Thank好非常感谢啊有机会参加这样的对话我觉得中国制造二零二五啊应该讲对我们所有的这个在座的包括中国的全球的这个制造业发展会带来极大的一个发展空间 也带来一个非常大的一个创新的空间。实际上也会给我们参与到中国制造2025的来自商业的、来自企业的创造一个巨大的一个商业和盈利发展的空间。呃，因为中国制造2025呢，开启了中国未来十年乃至三十年，也就
。我个人认为呢，在我们造船行业这样一个中国制造二零二五的应用，其它的本质还在于说我们造船模式的一个转变。所以对江南造船来说呢，那个我们在实施这个造船模式的转变，首先还是要构建这个唯一的数字模型跟呃唯一的数据源，在这样一个基础上，我们来。变革我们的业务流程，提升我们的业务绩效，所以我们也是希望通过我们三维体验平台的整个的应用，来真正实现造船版的中国制造二零二五。谢谢。Miss Mr. Du, how so concretely?、Um, what, how, what about your organization? I mean, in terms of implementation of this program?、Uh, okay. Uh, first, I would like to say.、Uh, Manufacture 2025 uh, bring a、uh, great opportunity uh, for all of uh, China and for、uh, different countries also. And but for、uh, my company is a、uh, is a investment investment company because the、uh, manufacture、um, 2025 uh, bring a、uh, huge demand from all kinds of. Senior、uh, technology and、uh, include,、uh, of course, 3D experiences software is a very、uh, fundamental, very uh, important uh, platform for the future manufacture. So uh, uh, the improvement、uh, requirement bring the investment、uh, requirement. So we got a big opportunity here also.、Mm -hmm. It's why we、uh, come here and work with Dassault System. Uh, Victor, we just uh, heard uh, what Mundia talked about Industry 4.0 and、uh, talking about the China 2025 plan. So, what can you say about about that implementation for companies in general? Yeah, I would say basically, probably many people, just like Mundia said, many people may say, okay, most of the Chinese companies or many of the Chinese companies are still at so-called in Industry 2.0 or even 1.5. So, why I should care about the 4.0? So I would say that's a, that's not a rule to say you have to upgrade to Industry 2.0, stay there for a while, and then you go to Industry 3.0. So just three or four months ago, I was meeting a CEO of a local auto company. So he told me a very interesting story. He said 20 years ago we set up the first plant. So at that moment we thought, okay, labor is cheap. So let's forget the fancy equipment. So we just invest a manual process. And after a while, he said, "Okay, we couldn't imagine the labor cost could rise so fast in the past years." And then three years ago, they had a second plant, and then they said, "Okay, now we need to look at the cost. We need to look at the efficiency." So they had a very automated production line there, and then he said, "Okay, but we didn't know the customer needs could be so tailored and so diversified now." So they had the efficiency, they had the cost, but they don't, they don't have flexibility. So this just shows you have to look forward. So you can just implement when you implement the lean, when you implement industry 3.0, you can also incorporate some of the elements of the 4.0. And secondly, I would say you don't need to implement everything. So you can choose. If you look at industry 3.0, so many of the Chinese companies, I, I visited many of them. Basically, you can see they have the core equipment fully automated, imported probably from Europe, from US. But for the other equipment, the surrounding equipment, very likely they buy from Taiwan or from Southeast Asia to have it half manual, half automated. So that same logic can be also applied in Industry 4.0.、Mm -hmm. And lastly,、uh, like Mengdia just said, basically Industry 4.0 is a concept, and technology is only the enabler. So I'll give you another example. So traditionally, the sales team develop a sales plan, and they hand over to production. And the production develop production plan, and then hand over to pro procurement, and then procurement develop their own plan, and then send the plan to to suppliers. If you look at Industry 4.0, the concept is that okay, the sales plan need to be shared simultaneously and directly to production, to supply chain, to suppliers, all together. This can be done with some advanced technology, advanced software system, but this can also well be done. Simply use the email and Excel. So you probably do not need a very fancy advanced technology,、mm -hmm. but you can still implement this kind of concept. All right. So what kind of performance improvement should an industrialist expect from this new China 2025 manufacturing revolution, Mr. Zhu? 
。哦，那个应该说刚才那个主题演讲中也提到这个，呃，绩效是一个最需要关注的问题。我想我也被问到了一个非常重要的问题。那么。呃，对于我个人认为呢，在对于中造船行业来讲，我们那个这个呃绩效，从中国制造二零二五所获得的绩效，最应该关注的还是客户体验的一个最佳化。那么对船厂来说，客户就是船东。那么从我们的研发开始，我们就得为船东来提供呃最好的、最优的这个船型，要绿色，要环保，呃，既要多装货，又要少耗油。那么，对我们制造来说，我们要为船东提供一个柔性的、智能化的整个一个建造的过程，能够让它全程实时的去跟踪我们的建造。那么，按照那个美国纽伯特纽斯，它有一块名牌，也可以说上面写着它的厂训，就我们需要建造好的船舶，呃，不论是赚钱还是亏钱，我们都必须交付好的船舶。那么，我想这也是我们作为船厂来说所追求的一个呃绩效，就是像船东。让它以最好的一个体验度来获得最好的一个船舶，而这样一个呃体验度的获得，也是需要我们在我们呃三维体验平台应用的基础上，以三维体验平台来让客户一起跟我们来享受这样一个体验度。谢谢。Thank you,、uh, Mr. Chen.、Uh, do you feel that you are innovative enough to stand the competition today? Um,应该肯定地说，我们是当然，因为我们在过去嗯十多年里一直在在进行这个技术上的创新，而且对将来我们也做了非常详细的计划和实施措施。我们有信心迎接二零二五的挑战。谢谢。Guillaume, uh, my next question is for you. So, what what are the internal obstacles or issues that could result in failure of implementing Industry 4.0? I think in implementing 4.0, one must have in mind that technology remains just an enabler. It's an important part, but it's just an enabler, and everything relates to business processes and the way you do things, which means the first thing is uh, you need a very strong business uh, governance uh, to be able to succeed in such programs. This is not an IT program. This is not an expert program. This is a business problem or a business program. Uh, and, and, and so change management and the way you optimize your processes in order to enable the technology to support them, this is, this is key. If you don't do that, if you take it from the technology part, if you take it from the IT part, uh, you, may, you may face a lot of difficulties. Absolutely. Victor, maybe you want to add something to this question? Yeah, I would say basically, usually, Based on our experience, the most difficult part is probably not really the technology, it's the organization. For example, basically Industry 4.0 is mainly about breaking the barriers and streamlining the whole value chain. So very often you see, okay, Department A use software A, Department B use another system, they're not connected, they're not compatible. And we also see, for example, you ask the sales team to input the real-time market information and of course, it's supposed to help the production and supply chain to be more flexible. However, if the sales team has spent a lot of efforts to input this kind of information, but nothing happened at the back end, and then the sales team will be tired, and eventually this will become the tool, will, the technology will become the pure burden to the sales team. So that's the first issue, basically how to change your way of managing internally. And the second issue, or second thing you need to pay attention to is how to work with your partners, basically your business model. For example, you probably, to, to, to ensure the, the data transparency, you may want your suppliers or your distributors to share the information with you. But why I should share the information with you? So it's not a transactional relationship. Eventually, you need a partnership. You need to look at the new contract or new agreement with your distributors, suppliers to ensure they also benefit from sharing the information with you. All right, thank you. Mr. Zheng Tao, um, how should large industry conglomerate embark on the digitization journey? Is it easier for other kind of companies? This is a very important topic. But we can assume that the digital path is a path for any industry company. And I think that this path is not a path for the path. 只是每一个企业
必须要有自己适合的路。那在大家都关注这个自动化生产线、这个无人车间、智能工厂这么一系列这个很火热的概念的时候，作为这个传统的大型的离散型制造的船舶工业呢，我们觉得我们实际上在一直在致力寻找一条适合自己的路。那我认为未来船舶工业在数字化道路上，我们应该着重于集中于三个关键点。那第一个是我们要选择合适自己的信息技术、制造技术和数字化装备。那第二个呢，是我们要创建自己的基于自己未来发展需求的业务流程和作业标准。那这个我想是我们构成企业核心竞争力的不可缺少的一个部分。那第三个，我实际上非常同意昨天的这个在大会上的某些专家的观点，就是在未来的工业四点零也好，中国制造二零二五的道路上，那尤其是对于船舶工业这种劳动密集型的企业，我们一直认为人仍然是最关键的因素。那只是说，在未来对人的要求和过去对人的要求会发生不断的变化。那如果我们能够在未来能够有效地掌握这三点，并把这三点的作用充分地发挥出来，那我相信。我们就能够很顺利的，或者说成功的走向整个企业的数字化发展的道路。好，谢谢。Thank you,、uh, Professor Yang.、Uh, could you probably briefly tell us about the internal plus plan?、嗯、这样，嗯、呃，我想，呃，按照这个主持人提的关于这个 Internet。Plan, 特别是中国的这个呃互联网加嗯、呃、的发展的话，我认为呢，这也是当前啊比较适合中国呃发展的一种模式。嗯、呃，二零二五中呢，提出了中国制造业走一条数字化、网络化、智能化的道路。那么，网络应该讲，特别互联网、物联网在中国现在发展很快，和制造业的深度融合，这是我们。呃，整个下一个阶段，中国制造二零二五的发展的一个最重要的一个实现的目标，要实现，呃，制造业和互联网的一个深度融合，也就是我们所谓的“加”，要真正促进呢这个网络和制造业的各个设计、制造、管理、运营的环节去融合，呃，还得要和客户深度的去融合，而这种融合呢，恰恰又体现在。我们大数公司现在提出了一个深度的体验，哎，让这个用户和产品设计、制造的过程深度的这样一个结合融合，以期达到最好的这样一个用户感受、用户使用和用户服务的目标。所以，我认为，这个互联网加也罢，或加互联网也罢，实际上呢，是让我们充分的把信息技术所带来的庞大的这样一个。变革力、强大的驱动力，能够和我们的工业实践和我们的制造企业的实践紧密的融合在一起。呃，加，哎，我想意识的，中国就是一个深度的融合。谢谢。Mr. Zhu, do you feel that you are leveraging all the data that your production systems generates or could generate? 嗯，那个这个数据在利用的问题啊，我觉得这个背后的一个呃实质性的问题，就是我们这个整个价值链的一个构建。那么，呃，对船厂来说，那个我们在建立了这个唯一的一个数字模型之后，这些数据在我们整个业务的不同业务流程的不同环节之间，它会以不同的形态，并且以这个信息量不断增加的这么个方式在增长。那么，在我们的不同的利益相关方，包括我们的研发、设计、总装、建造、呃配套商，包括传统传检，在数据在利益相关方之间也会产生巨大的一个流动量。那么，正是因为这样一种形态的转变跟呃流动，然后数据的价值在不断的被放大。那么，这个我认为就是我们应该要从这样一个。呃，制造二零二五也好，我们的建模二点零也好，要去获得的一个呃数据的再利用的价值。那么，当然那个目前因为我们江南造船也是从
呃，去年才开始在实施这样一个三维体验平台在造船上的应用，所以还是在过程中间。到目前呢，我们还没有能够享受到这样一个数据在利用数据价值放大的一个呃优势或者成效。呃，有时候甚至还要被那个产生的大数据爆仓，所以我们还是希望通过跟达索的不断的合作，来真正能够从我们的系统里面。能够把这些数据能够再利用起来，把它的价值最大化。谢谢。Thank you.、Uh, I would ask the same question to Mr. How do so? How are you leveraging the data? Uh, so from my uh point of view, we um uh, invest and own g uh, uh around two hundred technology companies. So uh, most of them is the online uh the internet. Uh, company, and uh, in the within the organization we have all kinds of silos, and but in the industry chain also we have different uh, silos also. So, I'm thinking the um, 3D experiences uh, platform um, in the future and and now uh, is uh, changing the the manufacturer way, and also uh, through the 3D experiences uh, platform. Uh, the, the data transformation or the data usage will um, uh, change uh, greatly and uh, bring the value to the future uh, manufacturer, bring the value to the customer. It's probably when in the future we use the 3D experiences from the C to M. When we uh, let the, the, the clients, they can communicate through the 3D platform with the manufacturer, then we can uh, break down all kinds of silos, break down the uh, obstacles, and bring the more value directly from manufacturer to the clients. I think that that would be a great uh, change in the, in the future, in the future ma uh, manufacturer is from the traditional uh, factory uh, uh, produce product, then through the supply chain stores to sell, to the clients, they can they can express their own ideas to the manufacturer. That that is one of the key change in the manufacturer uh, for for zero or manufacturer for zero plus. Thanks. Thank you. So today uh, we are more digital at home than at work. It will be easy for young employees to embark on this journey. Yet we're talking about, uh, Mundia talked about, we're talking about the skills in digital manufacturing technologies still needs to be developed. Guillaume, maybe you want to start. I mean, in, in this digital revolution, as we mentioned uh, time and time again, I mean, data is at the core of it. And, and if we look at competency, in that context, I think we have three, uh, three types of populations. Um, you have the data user. Well, um, for that population, I mean, it is our job uh, as enabler of that revolution uh, not to affect too much uh, or, or to, com to, to, to make products or, or to, to make it such that they don't have so much to evolve in their skill sets. We have to make the technology easy for them Okay, and that's probably the young people you are referring to or those who have iPads at home. We need to have the same types of interface uh, or interactions. Then uh, you have another population which are the data author. Uh, and and that, that population will certainly have to increase in skill set because we will want to model things uh, and hence uh, the data will be more conceptual. We need more, more conceptual approach uh, like system engineering is for product engineering. And so uh, obviously we're going to have to dedicate a great, great effort in, in raising those skills. And then there is a, a third population uh, which didn't exist before, which is data manager in which you can put data scientists, for example. Those are a new job and, and the BCG uh, study pointed that out very clearly. And, and, and this is a whole set of, 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 of new skills and hopefully uh, already universities, institutes have been working on setting up the new generation of those data managers. All right, Victor, maybe can you expand on this one? Yeah, basically, BCG was just mentioned. So I would say a, a very simple answer could be you, you train them. But this answer doesn't have any value. It's easy to say, but very difficult to do. So uh, I agree to Mr. Zhu just said, even though we are talking about industry 4.0 technology, but people is very important. 
So eventually, uh, you look, basically everybody have an iPhone. So I don't think it's that people cannot learn. It's more about you need to create fun, or you need to at least address the natural anxiety of a human being in front of a technology. So if you, if you think back 10 or 20 years back, how boys learn computer, at least in China. So I noticed most of the boys learn computer by starting from playing the computer games, by having fun. Yeah. So that's an example. And another real example is I was in a plant uh, in Guangzhou. Basically, they, they introduced a new technology to centralize all the production, production information. They have multiple assembly lines so that they can flexibly uh, allocate the product to different production lines. So this will shorten the planning uh, lead time. This will also improve the efficiency. But later on, they realized the, 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 the operators on the production lines were not very comfortable. In, in the old days, because the planning process is lengthy, so the preparation can be, can, they can prepare in a longer period of time. So the workers feel comfortable. They know what will be produced on this production line uh, well in advance. However, with the new technology, basically, because it's, it's much, fast, much faster. So they don't know what will be produced. And what the company did, so the company just put different screens on the production line to show the production planning or the, the new order coming out. Then the operators will easily know if they just go by, they have a look, they know, okay, what kind of product are coming out. So they were prepared, they were reminded, and this greatly solved the problem. So it's more about basically, you know, human beings, naturally, we feel anxious, we feel nervous before the advance of fancy technology. You need to address this. Mm -hmm. So what about human-centric manufacturing? What, what we talking, we talking, what about human-centric manufacturing? Yeah, uh, I think this is very important, but basically, uh, it's my, our view, basically, you talk about economics, you talk about uh, basically EHS, you talk about human-centric, everybody knows. But we also need to know, you need to enable, the whole organization need to enable the every single operator on the line. So the production line is becoming more uh, flexible, and then the operators need to be more and more self-learning. So uh, frankly speaking, many of the Chinese companies are still in the traditional mindset of the so-called scientific management. So they put a lot of the KPIs, a lot of the rules, principles on the operators. I, I, I have seen some of, in some of the plant, the, the, the frontline operator who earn 2,000 RMB per month have around 10 KPIs. This is something very strange or even ridiculous. So you need to remove all this kind of obligations or restrictions from your workers and encourage them to learn. So not only we talk about a working position, equipment need to be uh, basically human friendly, you also need to ensure your management system to encourage your people to learn, to develop themselves. Uh, thank you, Victor. So Mr. Chen Zewen, uh, how hard is it to produce right the first time and use those resources efficiently? This, uh, 因为任何一个事情都要经过不断的去努力去研究和探索建筑业的信息流管理的过程中建立了一个全过程的一个解决方案这个是我们觉得失败不可怕我们只要有信心工业Thank you, Mr. Chen. Guillaume, this is something that is very important uh, for DASO, um, and you've been talking about it a lot yesterday, so getting it right the first time. Oh yeah, this is at the core of, of, of the 3D experience platform. Uh, if you remember the quadrant, it is the 3D quadrant of the, of the platform, the ability to model. If we can model what we want to do before we execute it, with that model we can simulate, and we can make sure that things will happen right the first time. And, and a lot of the value that we can get in, in, in digital manufacturing, in this ability to, to modelize our operation, is the fact that 
we don't need to make prototypes, we don't need to, uh, uh, to uh, stop the line and, 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 and go by try and error, we don't have time to do that anymore. We can do that um, in the virtual space, we can validate and then we can execute. So this is for us the, the proper way and the solutions to do right first time. Right. Mr. Chen Zuen, I have another question for you. So at Gion Hydropower, you are among the biggest producers of renewable energy. Does that give Chinese manufacturers a competitive advantage to base their economy on renewable energy? Uh, 在设计施工建造之前，激发它的一个完整的方案，进行一个模拟出来，最终而提高它的呃经济的利用率、成本的控制率和风险的防范能力，最终达到我们工程的一个呃绿色、节能和效率最大。谢谢。Thank you. So sustainability is an important topic, so it's becoming an important criteria for more and more citizens of the upper middle class. Is China 2025, how is it contributing to this ambitious plan? Uh, who wants to start? Mr. Howdo, maybe. Uh, so uh, I, I, I think it's um, a very good uh, uh, question and a very good um, uh, future for the China manufacturer 2025. Uh, uh, so uh, the uh, China manufacturer 2025 not only bring uh, the opportunity to China, but bring the opportunity to the whole world. Um, China uh, has the uh, huge market. In the same time, they bring uh, a lot of um, <coughs> attention from different countries and uh, uh, generate uh, the, the opportunity and the demand from all kinds of uh, um, technology and uh, the, 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 the software. Uh, but in terms of sustainability? Uh, from, the, um, from my uh, point of view, uh, the manufacturer not only uh, bring the um, uh, new products and uh, all kinds of experiences, but we must uh, 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 consider the, the green technology, consider the, uh, um, the continuity, uh, and also uh, protect the, the environment. So it's, it's the whole. And uh, uh, from the China 2025 policy, it's the, uh, one of the key points also. All right. Uh, I would ask the same question to Mr. Zheng Tao. So in terms of sustainability, so how, how do you think China 2025 is contributing to this ambitious plan? <laughs> so can you speak in the mic, please? So Mr. Zhu, you want to answer to the question, probably. <laughs> <laughs>我试图回答，我觉得中国二制造二零二五的一个应该讲一个最高的目标，应该去追求制造的可持续化，为人类提供可持续的幸福发展之路。不管是数字化、网络智、网络化、智能化，它都是手段。目标呢是追求为其为为
这个首先我们在技术上肯定是要吸收先进的经验，创造自己的一个技术平台。最终我们是在要在标准化和流程再造方面做更大的努力，最终我们才实现我们的一个呃工业化发展的一个领先大国。同时顺便我更正一下我刚才的问题，我在这解释一下。因为我和其他几位嘉宾来的方向都不一样，我是做土木工程建筑的。刚才有一个问题，我回答的方向有有误，很抱歉，我在这里解释一下。第一个，因为是，嗯，我开始理解，因为是针对产品，我们第一次能不能允许失败？因为在工业上肯定是更加严谨，是不允许的。而我们在土木建筑行业，更是不允许第一次失败，因为它的投资巨大，而且它是没有原型设计的概念，我们必须保证它的投资。建设成本发生之前，必须做到所有的风险的防范能力。所以说，我们必须对工程的产品，甚至它的全生命周期，不光设计、施工、建造和运维，到最终的一个呃报废处理，都要建立一个完整的解决方案。也就是说，在所有的发生之前，要在在它计算机上进行一个数字的模拟和仿真。谢谢。Thank you, Mr. Chen. Um, so just. Probably, Victor, you want to add something to that last question. So, how is? Yeah, yeah I would say basically, uh, to make it simple, the answer is to further and continue to leverage the labor cost advantage in China. This seems to be very funny because people say, okay, China is already losing labor cost advantage, and that's why we have Industry 4.0. However, we, we have done some research. Basically, the cost of the real fundamental basic labor. Is really very high at the global level. However, if you look at the cost of the engineers, it's still relatively competitive, very competitive globally. And this is why actually the government need to push the innovation, push the innovative ideas, because these are the output of the engineering of the engineers. So many of the local companies, our clients, they they have seen forward looking, so they already invested in this area. So they build up an engineering team. They say, we develop solutions, we develop technology, we accumulate this as our future advantage. So this would be something that the Chinese can work very hard to ensure we keep the leading position in the coming 10 or even 20, 30 years. All right. Uh, Professor Yang, so do, do you think the, the, the program, do you see it as uh, that it encourages industrial innovation like the French plan, or is it just a concept focused on automation and productivity like most of the other programs? Professor Yang. Uh,的确,这个中国2025提出了一个很高的目标,要走到一个强国的地位,或者真如主持人先讲,走到一个领导者的角色,或者引领者的角色。呃,我认为呢,这个中国呢,的确啊,制造业发展今天已经成为一个
。我想这些理念应该都是一样的。我们，我觉，我感觉呢，中国的制造更乐于接受像法国啊、德国啊这样一些工业强国他们所。做出的比较这个推动工业化进程的一些理念，所以在这一方面我们应该更好的学习和交流。谢谢。Thank you, Professor Yang. So just before we conclude, one last thing. What about the experience economy? Who wants to say something about that? Anyone? Victor, maybe. Yeah, maybe I can start. So basically, that exactly shows. The, the core concept of Industry 4.0. So it's not only about technology, it's about experience. So eventually, uh, you need to collect the technology together with the human beings, basically your employees, your customers, your suppliers. You need to collect everything together. So again, we believe it's a business model change. It's a fundamental revolution. Instead of I just input whatever software or IT system, or I just put some robbers. So it's much more than that. All right. Um, now, if you had one important key message for manufacturing manu uh, people in, or manufacturing managers who want to develop their business in China, what would that be? Where should they start their transformation? Maybe Mr. Haudu? Uh, so I'm thinking um, the, the key message uh, is um, uh, the 3D experiences generation is coming, and it's a it's a very good uh, combination between China manufacturer and uh, China manufacturer 2025. Uh, also, um, you know, um, uh, I'm thinking um, uh, what I want to say. Uh, the the key message is uh, the timing now is uh, just right. So let's beginning. Uh, work for uh, 3D experiences uh, plus uh, China manufacture 2025. So I, I believe it's, uh, that will be a bright future. Mr. Chen, probably some advice for manufacturers. Sedo Yunji Suan, Nashu, Wulian Wang, or Yidong Hulian, Dong, Xinxi Jishu, the Quest of Ajan, Nashi, the Jinji Xin Chang Tai Xia, Sandy Tian Pin Tai, Kinish. 将来它会造成我们带来我们新的产业、新的市场、新的方向。希望我们要现在就要做好准备，为将来奠定基础。谢谢。Thank you very much. Uh, Guillaume, uh, it's almost time to wrap up, right? Close this round table. We've heard a lot of things today. For sure, the stakes are titanic, uh, but we can see that the challenges actually lead to greater opportunities in manufacturing industry, of course, for a brighter future, hopefully. So what would you like to say as a conclusion, and what w messages would you like the audience to walk away with? Uh, actually, uh, I like very much those two conclusions. Uh, because they come from, you know, real industrial doing things every day. And, and what they've just told us is that the 3D experience platform is the way forward and, and that all of us, you know, have to start today. So, so I would like to thank you for that conclusion and it's also obviously mine. So, uh, so let's go forward. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, you probably you can applaud our guests today. They've done a very good job. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So I think it was a very constructive topic, and we hope that through the vision of our panel of industrialists today, we've been able to convey the keys to unlock the challenges and transform them into great opportunities. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the end of this outstanding event. Um, it was indeed a great privilege to host this remarkable event today. It's now time for you to meet some industry experts on various topics related to manufacturing. We have designed for you six major themes involving six different topics every 45 minutes. In other words, there are 36 track sessions covering major challenges in manufacturing. For example, this morning, manufacturing transformation theme uh, deals with smart manufacturing, manufacturing operations management, virtual to real, real to virtual. Anyway, dedicated workshops where you can personally interact 
with our brand CEOs. As promised, we had a very rich morning session. We now leave you in the hands of our professionals, make the most of the 36 track sessions and enjoy the workshops. The 3D experience uh, um, playground is still open too. You can continue to discover the stations on our 3D experience playground. Well, I want to add again that it was a great privilege to have you all here today. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us and let me wish you all a very productive workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, may the transformational force be with you. Thank you very much and have a great workshop. Goodbye. Voilà.